So earlier in the week, I had put the leaves between this piece in this piece of muslin. This is actually not pre-washed muslin, but I put the leaves in there and let it sit with the leaves in something like this. So after I ran it through the machine, I left the leaf sitting for a day and then I took them out and I have some nice prints, but I want to bring out the color and the dye in here by dipping these papers and the fabric into some um, rust water. And we'll talk more about that, but I'm going to show you how to get your paper set up for your embossing machine. So I folded the cotty paper in half because I needed to fit in the machine. So it can't be any wider than this plate. And I think the plate is about six inches. No, that's not right. It's about five and a half inches. So folded my paper in half and I'm going to take these leaves I've just cut from, from the stem. So I had them sitting in water. I've been told that you can rehydrate dried out leaves and do this as well. Uh, but I'm just using the, the fresh cut leaves. So those are two eucalyptus leaves in the cotty paper. I'm going to put uh, two eucalyptus leaves in the cardstock printer paper type thing. Let's see. It's hard to get a nice arrangement. Let's just do this. We'll just do two on this one. And then I have already cut the poinsettia leaves. But when you cut poinsettia leaves, there's a milky substance that drips. So be careful with that. I've been saving these poinsettia plants since Christmas. So we'll do red, fresh red leaves in this one. So depending on your machine and the plates that you have to use, you have to fiddle around with the thickness. So here's my base A plate. With this printer paper, I need a B plate and another B plate. If it doesn't give you the pressure you need, you can always use a shim of another piece of paper. All right, so all you can do is just keep testing each sandwich that you make to see if it's going to put the right amount of pressure. And there's no pressure there, so that's not going to do anything. So since it's the poinsettia plant, I'm going to, okay, I've uh, folded just another piece of the same cardstock in half to act as a shim to make it a little tighter. I could put it in between all these plates, or I can actually um, just put it on top. So let's give this a try. Nope. I can already tell going through. That's where you have to fiddle around with your different settings. So cuddle bug, A, B, and C plate. Two pieces of paper. And it might be a little tight. So we'll take out one. Okay, this is going. So I can hear that it's got pressure and it doesn't need a lot. So it doesn't need to be super tight in there. So these were dry, fresh cut leaves, dry as in there was nothing on them. And I put it through and you can see right away the print. This is the um, poinsettia or poinsettia. So you can either take it right out or you can leave it sit. We'll take this one out since they were already falling out. But it's given us a like a purple tint to that. So let's try the eucalyptus. So again, ABC plate. Again, the leaves will deter will make a um, will provide some bulk. So some of the thinner leaves may need more shim. So this is dry eucalyptus on printer paper. Now the bonus about doing eucalyptus is 
the oils that it released smells really good while you're doing the work. So there's those. Try to keep your leaves separate. Now I have run the same leaf through a few different times with good results. Okay, the cotty paper and eucalyptus. That's probably going to be the A and two Bs because the cotty paper is like a watercolor paper thickness. I may need to pull this a little closer. Okay. It's not doing a thing. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Still not doing anything. Why? Go back to the ABC, see if that works. Watch, it'll be just a little too thick. Yeah, this is going to be tight. So if you have one of these electronic versions of these embossing machines, how much easier would that be? <laughs> so again, these were eucalyptus on the cotty paper. You don't get a shadow print on the back or an echo print, whichever they call it. But you do get some nice results from that. So I have the blue linen and the two eucalyptus leaves I just did with the paper and the ABC plates. So it's just squeezing it enough. I go through twice at least, you know, once forward, once backward. And you can already see the green coming through from the eucalyptus. So these leaves were, were pressed twice and I got this result. So these things, these papers that I did, I'm going to dip them in a rust bath and then the next thing I'm going to show on camera is doing it with the leaf painted with some rust water and then put between the paper. And an old paintbrush that I'm using just for this and I am going to put on one glove so that I can pick the leaves up and not get the rust water on my hand. So this rust water was made with some white vinegar and water and a bunch of rusty things inside. So I'm just going to put this on the leaf. I don't want it soaked. I just want it to have um, moisture there. And then we'll press it in the machine. I'm just using um, printer uh, cardstock, regular cardstock. So this is just the rust water. Got to have a paper towel handy, and you should also protect your surface with um, plastic cloth. Do your research before you start working with rust water. That's all I'll say. put this through. So we get a different result when we wet the leaves ahead of time. I already see it coming through, even with my scratched up plates. So your plates will be wet, so if you want the next thing to be dry, be sure to wipe your plates off. So with the rust water, it brings out this black purple color and it dry, it dries lighter and I have samples to show of that but this is um, what I'm learning is that if you're using vinegar to make your rust water your mordant you do need to rinse these in some clear water to kind of get the smell to leave a little bit so that looks like one of those ink blot tests doesn't it so this was the piece of paper that I ran through the embosser with just the fresh poinsettia leaves and that's how it will pretty much stay unless I do a dye setting to this. So I'm going to dip this completely in this little bit of rust water and then I'm going to put it into the tub of plain water to rinse it. But you should see a change pretty fast. I did get tweezers, I just don't know if it'll help. I don't 
I'll just give it a rinse. I'm, I know that if you let it soak in the rust water for a while, it will produce more orange on the entire paper. And I'll show you that. So this is the eucalyptus. Turn this outside. And we'll just give it a, a dip. And suddenly we'll see our prints. They, they develop rather fast, I guess, sort of like um, photography. Everybody say hi to my husband who's filming. Thank you for helping me. All right. The only other, I want to show the potty paper. Because this is watercolor paper. I'll turn it so you can see quickly. If you wanted the paper to be a more solid orange, you could leave it in this. But look how great that comes out with the... Uh, Eucalyptus leaves. Oh, wow. That's cool, isn't it? And I'm going to give it a little rinse. The first set that I did, I didn't rinse, and the paper all smelled. And so then I had to soak it all in water again. So it's gone through water quite a bit of, quite a bit of time. All right, so this was the piece of blue linen with the double-pressed um, eucalyptus. So let's see what happens with linen and rust. This is totally an experiment. I have no idea what we'll get. But I can already see the veins of the leaf just in that little bit of dipping. This time, squeeze that out. And give it a rinse. I can see like this purple color coming out from the rust. Now this linen was from a shirt and it's been washed and dried so the sizing of the fabric is gone. Oh that looks weird like it's got a rip leaf. All right that's it for now. I'll be back with more samples once I've done it, done the pressing and then I'll have them on the drying rack. So here I am after running all these different leaves through the cuddle bug, that's the embossing machine, and um, some fabric, some paper, some watercolor paper called Cotty paper. And here's that one print I thought was really super cool. So it looked like one of those ink blot tests. So word of warning, when you do this, wear gloves or something because your fingers will get your fingers will get really stained and anywhere the rust water drips you also pick up uh, black staining on those items so have old clothes uh, protect your floors your surfaces your hands and then when you're done wipe down all your machine parts like these plates and try to use your old embossing machine plates if you have them that's a perfect use for the ones that you don't want to use anymore with your paper die cuts and then we'll go downstairs and take a look at everything that's drip drying. So the last time I tried to record this, I lost the footage. So here are the drying prints. Sorry, we're in our la my laundry room, so there's some stuff in here. And that's what's going on with the fabric. This will all be better when I've dried it completely and then I've pressed it with the iron to give it more of a heat setting. There's the paper. And then, sorry, try not to move this fast. There's another sheet of paper. There's a little bit more, and then 